So there's an ongoing question whether Aikido uh, is, an, is a good aid for, for developing your health. And actually that, but that actually stems from a bigger question of whether sports are healthy. And I would like to mention both sides, the positive and the dark side, as, as, in my, as oftentimes in, I do in my previous videos. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there might be a bit of a dark side uh, more present here, but we'll do our best to maintain a balance. But to start with, um, at least in my country, in Lithuania, there's a saying that, uh, there's an old saying that uh, sports equals health. Uh, and the more I look at it, it's not really true for most sports, uh, uh, if you, especially professional sports. If you're really going for big uh, achievements, most of the times you're gonna have to sacrifice something uh, without minding your body. And if you don't mind your body, you're gonna get hurt. And, uh, and some of those parts actually do apply, in my experience and what I saw and experienced myself with my body, in Aikido too. Uh, so first of all, uh, I see that there's two... Uh, when you're doing anything, but sports, physical activities include that too, there are two dangers. And one of them is fear, and the other one is ambition. So if you're afraid of, uh, of doing something, you have a hesitation, uh, your body tenses up and then you can hurt yourself. When, when you look at Aikido, for example, you do kemi, you do rolls, and, and you, you're afraid, uh, that tension is not gonna help you. You're gonna do it and you're gonna probably get hurt. Uh, and the other one, which is uh, most of the times more, more visible is ambition, is when you don't listen to your body. So looking at the same example of rolling, when, uh, let's say, you know, Sensei shows jumping over five people and doing a roll, and, and you feel that you're not ready for it, your body's not ready for it, but then, but then your ambition says, okay, I was training Aikido for this many years, and, and everybody else is doing, so I, I have to do it too, and I try to jump over, and probably you're gonna get hurt, because the body is not ready for that, and there is a part of you which says that you are not ready, and it's a very important uh, to listen to that part. As I say, you do something ambitious and, and you don't listen to your, to your intuition, to your body, to your feelings, you get hurt, you're not gonna train for one month. But it, either if you don't do it for that one day, you miss that one day, you miss that one training, you can train for the one month. So, so it's important not to go there. And, and when we continue to look at ambitions, also there's a part of not minding pain. Uh, and that's very, actually that's, that's quite a macho thing. And, uh, and many men tend to do that. You know, there's a belief that if, if you accept, if you, if you acknowledge pain, then you're weak. But that's not true. And it's something we need to get rid of. So, and that applies to Aikido too. So for example, sitting in Seiza, sitting on, on, sitting on, sitting in Seiza, sitting in, on knees, uh, it's not, especially in our Western culture, we're not used to do that. And for many people, it's, it doesn't feel right. You know, there's a lot of pain. And uh, it's, it's impossible to, to continue to train uh, yourself sitting on the knees. And actually, that's, that's a good point. That's the light side of the healthy part of Aikido is, is that Aikido does develop flexibility. It does develop endurance. It does develop uh, uh, strength in legs when you're sitting in Seiza. But it's important that to get that aspect of health, you need to, to be conscious when you reach that line of suffering, when you reach that line of where the body through pain says, tells you, this is not good, you have to stop. Pain basically is the way of body saying, this is not good, change something. So when you're sitting in sales and you want to look good in front of everyone, so that's ambition, everybody else is saying, sitting like that, and you sit for there for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20, an hour, and it feels horrible, that means your body is suffering and it's, it's hurting, it's damaging. And maybe for that day, you will feel the winner. Maybe you will feel uh, like you're, you're, you're very good because you, you were able to suffer through that. But if you do it one time, two times, after 10 years or 20 years, your knees are gonna go out and you're never gonna be able to train Aikido in a good way ever again. Uh, and that's, that's something I, do, I did witness. Uh, there's, uh, there's quite a lot of Aikido senior people, instructors. Some of them are famous, some of them I personally know. 
uh, some of them trained for many years, some even not so many years, they had knee injuries. Even myself, I had a knee injury because of uh, because I wasn't listening to listening to my body uh, in my teenage years when I started training. So um, when you notice that so many people have those uh, injuries, first of all, it does uh, bring out the question: Okay, how 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 does that uh, how does that kind of work through that health aspect and that there might be a danger since we walk on the knees, we move so much on the knees and we're not used to, to that and knees are quite uh, fragile in general. But, but in my experience, if you mind the pain, if you don't overdo it, you can stay healthy if you do it at the right level. Um, so as I said, sitting in Seiza can be healthy, can develop the flexibility many people miss in this day and that's the bright side of Aikido. Uh, is the movement, is, is the coordination that you develop. We're such a big culture of sitting, um, sitting by the computer, sitting uh, at the car, that our body loses its flexibility and that later causes many problems. So, so developing that flex flexibility through sitting in Seiza, through Aikido movement can be very great. But you have to be conscious of, 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 the, of the dosage of which you use. So let's say, you know, you sit for one minute, it starts to get uh, painful, you can maybe go for five more seconds to, to push that barrier, but then stop, you know, cross your legs, allow yourself to rest. And some dojos won't allow that, and I, I will refrain from questioning it too much, but, but do be careful about such an approach. Um, so in general, that ambitious part is dangerous for Aikido, and, but it's more of a personal responsibility too. This, it's good if the sensei says that, but especially since you're watching this, you're, I'm talking to you about this, you're thinking about this, remember that it's your responsibility too to stop. And it's hard, I know that it's hard to stop when everybody else is doing. If you're very passionate about Aikido, you will want to go on the mat and uh, train uh, even when you're sick. Uh, and actually, there's a bright side here too, uh, which is interesting to notice that, for example, what, what I experienced both with yoga and Aikido um, is that um, if, if you're sick but you're going towards healthiness, going to Aikido, moving a lot, you sweat a lot, you roll a lot, the, the body moves itself through and you can actually become, uh, you can actually cure your, 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 your flu through that, but if you're just starting to get the, the flu and you need that energy, training won't be good. Again, you have to be conscious and responsible for what you do and when you do it and how you do it and how much you do it. And one more interesting point to look at from what I noticed through my years of Aikido training, as I said, knee problems and hip problems are common in Aikido, so you have to be careful about those parts. Back problems, uh, it's interesting, I haven't heard, I don't remember anyone Naikido tell me about back problems and uh, when I think about that, that might be a good healthy part of Aikido too because a straight back is very important in Aikido. And many people, you know, even when they lean down to take something, they don't know the proper way to do it, that you have to keep your back straight. But in Aikido, you learn that. Even when you bend your knees, you go down, you sit up, you stand up, you keep your back straight, so that's healthy. And many senior Aikido people, they have very nice back, uh, straight backs. So that I haven't investigated personally, but when you look at it, that, that you, you can notice that maybe that's actually a strong point of, of the um, healthy part of Aikido, which is there too. As you train, always be conscious at, uh, of the limits. So that's the, something I stress to myself, to my students, I want to share with you. Um, uh, last part though, uh, interesting to notice, you know, when we speak about health, we do forget that health is, uh, we oftentimes forget that health is not just physical health. And here I feel, and here I feel Aikido can be, um, can be very powerful and in the inner health. So actually, first of all, there's a mix between body and, and mind um, uh, where Aikido can actually, it's a more rare way of training Aikido. So I can't talk too much about that. I, I don't feel the ability to talk about that too much, but, but there is a way I can share uh, to train Aikido, which is actually 
a healing way. You can do movement while you're training. You can do movements. You can move in such a way which feels good for the body, and then and then actually those movements can be healing. But it's a more of a subtle. It's a bit of a more difficult part to catch, but you can all actually be conscious about that too. There's also some free movement exercises. There's many things possible, but it's not just present in all Aikido trainings, all dojos. But coming to the the inner side, to the spiritual side, um, we do forget that actually even a lot of our body illnesses also come from the mind. Mm, I heard this saying more than once that uh, in modern days, a huge number, you know, maybe maybe 70 or 80 percent of the of body illnesses are actually connected to the mind. When the mind is conflicted, uh, you know, the digestion starts to go bad because it's so connected to the mind. When the digestion goes bad, all the, uh, the, the rest of the body goes bad, the energy level goes bad. Uh, when, um, when you're in stress, the body is tense. When it's tense, it's more prone to, to become uh, injured, more stiff. So the mind is, uh, the healthiness of the mind is very important also for the body and for your own general feeling. And Aikido, if trained properly, can really help you uh, develop that inner health, healthness, which will later develop the healthiness of the body too. In Aikido, in many dojos, in many different tra uh, training ways, it makes sense to, to be flexible, to receive. Uh, so when you're training, falling, um, uh, in, in a way which feels good, in a way where you fall and you stand up and you don't get hurt, so you're supple. Uh, when somebody does a technique on you, you're able to receive. That also develops that ability to receive life, to receive dif different situations, to adapt to them, uh, to make a mistake and to stand up, to not take it as, as the worst thing in life. Um, also, in Aikido, um, it's encouraged to train with the mentality of no enemy. So. So you do train on a level where you don't compete to each other, but you support each other, you help each other, and you don't, you, you develop a vision where you don't see even potential attackers as enemies, but rather as people who we can uh, wake up to, you can help them. When you learn that approach, when you start to dis discover that approach of no enemy, there's a lot of stress which goes down when you start to look less at winning and losing, which is also a conscious part of Aikido, Masugatsu Agatsu, uh, true victory is victory over yourself, where you don't compete, there's no competition, there's no tournaments. When you start to lose that uh, drive for proving yourself, for winning, um, that takes such a huge part of stress away from your life. When you start to learn to live in a way where you don't compete, where you don't try to win, where you accept failure, where you receive different situations, you adapt, you stay subtle, supple. Um, all that can make your mind, uh, give your mind a chance to be at such an ease where your body loosens up too. And, and your mind doesn't, uh, doesn't disturb the body from, um, from functioning you start to feel emotionally good, which is very important. So basically Aikido, if, pro if trained uh, properly, can be an emotionally healing practice, which later, and psychologically healing practice, which later influences obviously the body too. So that health, healthiness part of Aikido should not be, um, should not be ignored. And if you train not only Aikido techniques, if you don't, uh, rely on ambition or a fear, uh, but rather you train the right attitude, you listen to your body, you respect it, and you develop yourself gradually. It can be a very powerful healing exercise, not only for yourself, but also for others too. You know, if you don't see the other person as an enemy, if you accept him as the way he is, if you support him, that can heal so much in his life. So to sum it up, if you take all those points, Aikido can be a very powerful healing uh, practice if trained properly. So just training it might not be enough. So ask yourself how you train it, uh, be conscious about uh, what you allow yourself and what you refrain from. Are you listening to your body? Are you being conscious about what you are developing? And if you are, Aikido can be a very uh, strong influence for your life and can help you maintain healthiness for many years to come.